Hello, I'm Peter Hall and welcome to Interview with the Arts. Today we are meeting with Ernie McGeorge from Seneca, Illinois. How you doing, Ernie? Good. Good. All right. Ernie is the, what do you call yourself? Uh, the prairie poet for my oh. poetry. You know, and, and uh, uh, where are you from, Ernie? Well, I was uh, born in Hamble, Missouri. Okay. And uh, we moved up here when I was five, and we spent a lot of time up there. And the rest, most of my life, uh, uh, spent in Seneca. And now uh, I'm out in the country, and I got a Marseilles address now. So you you were actually, I came to Marseilles when I was five years old myself. Well, yeah. My father was the uh, principal at Marseilles High School. Mm -hmm. From, from 1952 to 1967. You say you came up here from Hannibal, Missouri? Yes. That's Samuel Clements. That's true, Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Mark Twain's home. You know, so, he was a he was pretty author. Good. He was pretty yeah, yeah, author. Yeah, so he was pretty good. you, you, you kind of got that from the water. From yeah, maybe it's the water. <laughs> and, uh, 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 Seneca. Um, do you go to Seneca? You went to uh, Seneca schools. Yes, you, know, right. you went yes. to Seneca schools. Yeah. Uh, what year did you go? You know, what year did you graduate? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Nineteen sixty-five. Right. Uh, um, can you remember? Uh, like, who was your one of your uh, like principal? For that school, uh, Mr. Hoban. Mr. Hoban. Yeah. You remember uh, a guy whose name was uh, Arkell Wisely. He was, yeah, think, he was one of my teachers. Yeah, he, he was. Uh, my dad was kind of inspirational of getting uh, Arkell up to Seneca, and then I think he was only in Seneca. I think for well, I, he, I left, don't he left about sixty-five around in there, around your Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, he went down to. Uh, uh, Southern Illinois and became mm -hmm. superintendent of schools down there. And uh, he's passed away now. But uh, uh, what's, uh, what really interesting things that you did in that high school that kind of made you, you know, were you, did you like uh, um, literature or something like that in your school? No, uh, English uh, Lit was my favorite class. Yeah. 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 I was a terrible student. So, so was I. <laughs> you know, I, I was, you know, we're, 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 I think you were like me. We were late bloomers. Yeah, maybe. Right? <laughs> the best, one of the best days of my life was the last day of high school. <laughs> yeah, me too. I did not like <laughs> you know, it, it's like uh, I, I, I was a poor student too. I never, I never lived the image. Of a, a a son of a principal, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I was a goof off a little bit, and I was, uh, you know, I was quiet though. I was quiet. I was basically a dreamer, you know what I mean. And uh, uh, did I get in a little trouble in school? Yes, I did. But my dad was a detention teacher. Oh boy, you know. Yeah. And it was like, oh boy, you know, it's just like. Uh, well, a couple times I got sent down, me and some of my couple times with classmates we were goofing off in the class or something like that. And we went down to my dad, see my dad at, you know, the detention teacher and the principal. And the person that went down with me had to serve detention, detention. My dad was, well, I'll see you when you get home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait a minute, Dad, I want to serve detention. <laughs> no, you're going to see you. Wait a minute, I want to serve detention. <laughs> That's a bad you know? And uh, uh, I, 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 to carry on a little bit, if we're talking to you, it's about myself a little bit, excuse me. But, uh, you know, I, my dad says, you're going to go on to college. Dad, I don't want to go to college. You're going to college. Well, I went to Southern Illinois University for a short amount of time. Well, basically, 
on the summer months because my dad got me late. I had to go into start summer school at SIU to qualify for me to go. I had to keep my grades up mm -hmm. to go down. Well, all my relatives from Southern, all my relatives, my cousins were the same age as me and they were all party animals, to tell you yeah. the truth, you know. And I went down there and uh, um, I flunked out hmm. after three months. <laughs> three months? Yeah, after <laughs> three months, record. and I didn't qualify. Uh, my parents come down and to my grandma's, I was staying with my grandma's who lived in Southern Illinois, and they come down and uh, pick me up, and I never told my mom and dad that I flunked out. I was too, I didn't want to tell them until I got back. Mm. Well, we're driving back, we're driving back, and my dad pulls over and I tell my mom, you know, when I was looking at something, my dad says, well, we'll be coming back here in, in, in two or three weeks when we take Pete back to SIU. I went, Dad, I'm not coming back. I flunked out. Not a word was said all the way home. You, know, <laughs> you could hear a pin drop in that car all the way back. And, uh, and then uh, I got a job at Caterpillar. And Ernie and I, what year did you hire in the Caterpillar? Uh, 69. 69. I got hired in 66. And uh, um, I became a machinist and everything like this. And uh, uh, back then, back then, it was mainly, mainly uh, manual machines. Right. You know, manual machines. And uh, when you hired in at Caterpillar Joliet, what was one of your first jobs you did? Uh, labor and maintenance. You were late. You well, went. I hired in twice. Okay. I hired in uh, as as a machine operator to run a little mill uh, on second shift, and that didn't work out. I was too young to work second shift. There was time to party and and so forth and. Uh, I only worked there a short time and I quit and went working uh, construction out of Marseilles as a laborer. Yeah. And shortly after that, I was drafted. So I lost, uh, actually, maybe I didn't. Whatever time I spent at Caterpillar would have gone toward my retirement. But right. since I quit and I got rehired later, right. I didn't count. But, yes. Yeah, and then after I hired in the second time, I went into maintenance, and then I worked uh, 30 years there. Yeah. 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 And retired, and, and I was retired for two years. And I did, did different jobs. I worked for uh, Direct TV, putting installing uh, TV dishes. Yes. And I, was, I had a home inspection business for a while, and uh, different things to fill that two years because I was bored. And then I got a job at uh, Marcel's uh, National Guard train site, I'm working for uh, Illinois Department of uh, Military Affairs. Well, yeah. So yeah. And then I spent I worked there 16 years. Yes. And retired again. Yes. Yeah. And I, I remember uh, I remember this. I, I worked. Uh, I was hired in 1966 in Caterpillar after I went down to college <laughs> and uh, and then I retired in 2002. What year did you retire in Caterpillar? 2000. 2000. Yeah. 2000 and everything. But I, I can remember folks, uh, uh, I became an NC machine operator. My first NC machine was in the uh, mid 70s. It came into Remember, remember the NC machines, you know, CNC. Well, this CNC would be machines. Yeah. Well, this was a NC machines. <laughs> basically, they were tape. You know, they, yeah, they run off tape. They basically, a key punch. Yeah. You know, the key punch computer, and it was a tape and everything. And then they, then they got in, in, in 
late 70s, they came out with more <clears throat> uh, computer room, mm -hmm. CNC, computer run NC machines. Right. And uh, I, I, I worked on them and everything. And folks, uh, when I was working on them, running them, a lot of things went wrong with them. And who we have to call in the plant? We had to call maintenance. And here comes Ernie. <laughs> I'm a repair, repair machine, man. You know, and, uh, but Ernie was on uh, most of the time. Did you ever work third shift? You were, oh, yeah. I yeah, you were third shift. shift. Third shift, I remember, but you were in a different building. But I remember during all the moves that we made in the 80s. Right. I remember all the moves we made in the 80s. I was in the E building, and I think you were out of E building yeah. there in Joliet and everything, too. And uh, uh, I remember, yeah, I'm having trouble with this Cincinnati Millicron Sintern. Remember them, you know? Yeah. And, uh, we need a little uh, maintenance guy because you go. They used to go from like high gear to low gear, you know. To it, and sometimes it wouldn't hit the solenoids. <laughs> you guys would pull up, open the drawer, hit the solenoids, and boop, there it goes, you yeah. know. And the you know, rest is kind of history, you know. Produced a lot of uh, caterpillar equipment, you know. I, I, and e building mm -hmm. they. E-building, they made a lot of uh, the cylinders that, uh, for Caterpillar. You know, we made a lot of cylinders that moved the blades up and down. And, you know, basically this, we were in Joliet, we were a hydraulics plant. And uh, uh, they came to the point, Caterpillar is from the big boys in uh, Peoria at the time, says we were not a major corporation plant. We were just a hydraulics plant. You know, we never had a finished product, right. what it was. You know, we never made a bulldozer. We never made an excavator. Only thing we had was a hydraulics. And then the Caterpillar says, well, you're not a major one. And I thought, wait a minute. What's a Caterpillar without hydraulics you know it, it's just a it's just a piece of machine that goes goes from point a to point b that's all it was you put a hydraulics on it now it digs dirt <laughs> you know but uh anyway uh uh your poetry ernie your poetry yeah uh what really got you in to interesting in the poetry i know you had it in school but you know, <clears throat> what really got you after you retired, I mean, retired a few years ago, what really got you interested in your poetry? Well, probably song lyrics. Yes. Always, you know, it's like, I like the uh, poetry in, uh, that we had in high school, the, you know, the classics. Yes. Uh, like Frost and some of the others. Yes. But uh, I really enjoyed that. And then, I always like song lyrics. I've actually, you know, I've, I've actually written some song lyrics, and song lyrics are just poetry with yes. a little, you know, a good meter to it that, yes. that fits the music. Yes. And usually you have to uh, some songwriters, you know, write their own stuff, and some use uh, lyricists and along with the musician, and uh, you can write like they call it a song poem, but uh, it won't exactly match the meter of the music. Right. So they have to work together. Right. To get them to yeah. fit together to come yes. up with a song. That's, that's music. That's music. You know, music is poetry. Yeah. That's what it is. Lyrics, lyrics and music is poetry. Correct. You know, and it's a combination of a beat with lyrics in a song. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. kind of a, um, it's, it's, what we listen to, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, but uh, we have that, you know. But uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a break right now. 
And I'll be coming back with you, Ernie, and I want you to read some of your poetry. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. So we'll just 